Welcome to Worship with DeSoto Presbyterian Church. We hope you will join us on YouTube for the duration of the coronavirus emergency. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Let us come to God in prayer. Perfect light of revelation, as you shone in the life of Jesus, so shine in us and through us that we may become beacons of truth and compassion, enlightening all creation with deeds of justice and mercy. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Isaiah 40. 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither 
and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes we may feel in this world as if God has forsaken us. Everything around us seems so bad. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We've had social and political unrest. All sorts of things are happening around the world. And it doesn't look like 2021 is going to be any better than 2020. I had a friend who in mid-January said, okay, I've changed my mind. I don't want 2021. Let's just skip straight to 2022. Unfortunately, we don't have that option. And when things happen that are bad, it's not because God doesn't notice or doesn't care that there's injustice. In the face of that despair, the scripture reminds us that wherever we are, whatever our circumstances, the all-powerful, all-loving God of creation is always there. We know that sometimes when we want to soar like eagles, when we try our best, all we can do is barely manage to put one foot in front of another, to get out of bed and go about our daily business, working over and over at what seems to be an endless stream of the same thing. But God assures us that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. God is there. Given the choice between the sort of relief that is distant, the kind that comes from God, a promise that is everlasting, but sometimes seem to be slow in appearing, and that which is ineffective, but seems to be close at hand, people often choose the relief that's close by. It's easier, it's more convenient. I can do this and I'll feel better. So what kind of choices would those be? We can become enslaved by our choices, choices of drugs, alcohol, choices of lifestyles, that put us at risk, choices of who our God is. All of those things may feel in the short term like they make us better, but our hope remains in God. He promises us that we shall walk and not faint. So to wait for Christ to come in his fullness it's not just a passive thing. As we wait for the fulfillment of these prophecies, as we wait for that relief, we are called to be the people that Christ expects us to be. And it's not a passive thing. It's not just a pious going to church, doing what's right, although many of us are going to church on YouTube these days and not getting to go in and sing and pray. 
On the contrary, to wait for Christ to come in his fullness is above all else to act as Christ in the world, to act in a steady, patient Christian fashion so that we know Christ and we can share Christ with others. To wait for Christ is the best we can do as we wait and show his love to those who need it. We go out and bring those in despair the word of Christ so that his healing and hope can reach more than ourselves, but all the people of this world, all those who believe that there is no hope, all those who believe that there is no justice, all those who believe that there is no compassion or love, all those things we can carry in Christ's name to this world. And you may listen and say, but how can I reach the world? I'm a small person and right now I'm stuck in my house because of coronavirus. There is always a way to reach out. It may only be to one person at a time. Send a card to someone who's alone or sick and remind them that God is with them and that you know they are hurting. That is a way to take Christ's love. You can take Christ's love to people by providing food and clothing and other things to those in need. You can show Christ's love by simply being an ear and letting people tell you of their grief and their heartache and all that they have experienced without judgment, without an offer of how they can do it better, but simply to be the one that listens and says, I care about you and God cares about you. The promise in the verses of these scripture is clear that those who wait on the Lord, those are the ones that will find strength. That is the message we carry to the world as Christians. That is the message that everyone needs. They who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will have the power of God behind them that will carry them through the trials of life. Remember that our world is transient and that when we ask for comfort, what we're really asking for is strength. Comfort, our word comfort, comes from the Latin cum forte, to give strength. Our comfort comes in the strength of God. And God has given us that strength through his son, Jesus Christ. And we are fortunate to have it. And in all our lives, it will not forsake us, for we will mount up as wings, with wings as eagles. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. This is the word God has promised us. This is our promise of eternal life through Jesus. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. To God who welcomed all in love, let us pray for the good of the church and the concerns of those in need. Merciful Father, we pray this day for those who are ill, who are grieving, who are depressed, who are alone, who are fearful. Be with your people in distress. Grant to each of them the peeling and peace and healing that only comes from you. Help them know your strength as promised in the words of Isaiah. We ask your blessing on all who work to keep us safe. We ask that they know that you are with them and if they will trust in you, they too will have the strength to go on. Keep a loving watch over those who risk themselves for the care of others. We ask for wisdom and guidance for the leaders of this world. Give them an understanding of what is best for the people and the courage to do the right thing. Give them compassion and care as they look at the people they guide and help them to follow what you would have them do. Everlasting God, you give us strength. You give strength to the powerless and power to the faint. You raise up the sick and cast out demons. Make each of us an agent of healing and wholeness that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. And together we pray as Christ taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Render no one evil for evil, but seek justice and walk humbly with your God. Amen. To send your tithes and offerings, the address is DeSoto Presbyterian Church, Post Office Box 548, DeSoto, Texas 75123. You can also find us on Facebook.com and our website, DeSotoPresbyterian.org. Please share this video with friends and neighbors.